so many uh, incidents of uh, violence in Oakland. What do you think is going on right now? Well, I certainly am in constant communications with not just our police department, but our Department of Violence Prevention. And absolutely, there are aspects of this spike in violence, which cities across the country are experiencing. And there is some nexus to COVID, not necessarily the disease itself, but its impacts. But, but this is gut-wrenching for that many children to witness one of their own peers, fathers, who, who's there in support of his children, watching a football practice, uh, lose his life in broad daylight in, in a park, in one of these sacred public spaces, um, that is beyond the pale. Uh, now, you know, we have arrested the suspect. Uh, it, it is likely a case that will get charged very quickly, uh, but we are just wrapping our arms around these young people. They need counseling, they need therapy. No one of any age should have to witness someone being shot, but certainly not children that young. Yeah, and you're right, a, a safe space where they're supposed to relax and have fun, it's the middle of the day, their parents are around, it, it is really quite the culmination. Um, Connect the dots for me, if you will, on the whole, and I've heard this before too, relating the pandemic to an increase in violence, um, not necessarily the illness, but the societal impacts. How does that work? Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw a huge increase in people purchasing guns, both legal and illegal. Uh, we've seen conflicts come out of the unemployment scandal and fraud. Um, and certainly the the sense of uh, kind of desperation and, and the, the sense that there's no future, that hopelessness is often what also fuels not just violence, but a sense that kind of government justice is not going to be effective and that people need to take their conflicts and their sense of justice into their own hands. We're working all those angles. Um, and we, of course, are seeing a variety of different types of violent acts. But these shootings and homicides are what are really unprecedented for Oakland. Um, we have now have had our 24th homicide uh, just last night heartbreaking after we had made so much progress, national recognition. Uh, Oakland is cited in books and articles as being one of the most successful efforts to cut violence in half and keep it there for years. And this year uh, has just re undone all of that effort. The uh, Howard Terminal Ballpark, the environmental impact review is expected today. What do you think we're gonna see on that? Well, this is a huge milestone for a new waterfront ballpark to keep our A's rooted in Oakland. And I am so excited about this project. It is expected to be really an unprecedented environmental project, uh, committing to having no net greenhouse gas impacts. Uh, and that means the A's are gonna be doing some really uh, just groundbreaking things like providing uh, car charging stations for electric cars. Now the big environmental impact that people are most concerned about is traffic. And this environmental impact report shows um, a number of ways that that can absolutely be addressed by taking advantage of the great BART and bus access that is close by and improving the bike and pedestrian access from the BART stations, including a pedestrian and bike only flyover over the train tracks that separate the ballpark site from the downtown. Uh, so we also are gonna be very sure to make improvements to the truck uh, operations that serve our port. We really are completely committed to making sure that we do not impact our working waterfront, our beloved port industries, so that that you know, economic engine can keep on chugging and we can play ball on the waterfront at the same time. Well, of course, the, uh, the tenants right now at the Port of Oakland continue to fight. They just filed an appeal. They do not want this project to get any sort of, you know, expedited access to actually happening. You know, the traffic is the concern. How do you get people, say, from the BART station, if they even are comfortable with taking public transportation at that point, to the ballpark? And, you know, when we hear about this bridge and whatnot, 
how likely is that to happen right off the bat? Well, if it is a, an actual required mitigation, it actually has to be built as part of the project. So that's what these environmental impacts reports are for. They really do a scientific uh, analysis of any impacts on the water quality, the air quality, and that includes traffic. Uh, and it really requires the project to include those mitigations as part of the project. Now, there are going to be other things that are recommended, and that's what we're going to be considering. The A's are also com <laughs> committed to a very generous community benefits package, and that process of really listening to the voices of the community, particularly those that have felt very under uh, listened to in the past, that process is well underway. I'm sure that will also yield some exciting extra benefits that go beyond the environmental mitigations that will be required by law. Okay, let's see what happens there. On the sports front, you've probably heard about the Warriors planning on wearing these jerseys that say Oakland on them. And a lot of people who live in Oakland are saying, you know, too little, too late, all of a sudden trying to throw your support across the bay when you've already moved. Where do you stand on that? You know, they are still our team. And I find that the Warriors are making every effort to absolutely be Oakland's team. Just because they've been playing on one side of the bay or the other for years, they have always been the team of the bay. And they're showing up in Oakland. They're painting Oakland forever on their court. Uh, they invited me to be a virtual court side guest to the game where they unveiled the Oakland forever jerseys and court. And I do not think it's fluff because I see the Warriors showing up in Oakland all the time in the community where it matters the most. In fact, I was literally with their chief legal officer yesterday announcing a huge partnership with J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, a fellowship program to mentor young men of color in Oakland. So they don't just uh, put their mouths, they put their money um, in Oakland. They are committed to the city and I think people should just get over it and uh, focus on getting them back to that winning streak. Uh, you know, we're, we, we're champions, let's get back to that. Let's talk about the uh, the vaccination rollout. Of course, um, you have the Coliseum right now in full effect and several other local community clinics. Now the push to vaccinate teachers. Uh, we've got to get our schools reopened. We've got to get our kids back to learning. And we know that one non-controversial part of that path is to get our teachers vaccinated. And so I was uh, so pleased to join our governor, Gavin Newsom, at a dedicated site uh, that is made possible by our federal partnership. That means the vaccines that are going into the arms of our teachers and our education workers, don't forget those beloved cafeteria workers and custodians, those are out of the federal supply. They're not impacting the state supply. Uh, so that's what is really exciting. Uh, this site at the Alameda County Department of Education in Hayward is dedicated only to our beloved educators. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Would you, any clue on when school might resume in person there? Uh, and as a mayor and a mother, I'm, I'm frustrated too. And I will be joining parents uh, at a rally this Sunday to really try and get our schools open. Uh, Alameda County has approved the Oakland reopening plan. Uh, the science supports that it is okay to open schools now. Now we have to give families choice and we have to accommodate the health needs and concerns of our teachers. But we should have our schools open so people have that choice. And we know the impact it's having, not just on learning, but on the mental well being of our kids. That's why it is so important. We've got to get them open, we've got to keep them safe. And that is also keeping them learning. So the county's approved the, the school district's plan. From, from your perspective, what is standing in the way of doing this next week? We have got to get an agreement with our labor partners and uh, the teachers union and the district have been in good negotiations, but they have not gotten over the finish line yet. Uh, 
Uh, it is certainly looking better as our numbers continue to go down here in Alameda County. Uh, we are not uh, in the orange zone yet, but we certainly are getting closer. Uh, I think that is helping. Getting teachers vaccinated is helping, but I believe the schools should be able to reopen now so that we can give families those choices and we can work to accommodate the teachers that need to be accommodated. Of course, you uh, saw San Francisco's unprecedented move of suing its own school district. Is that something you could ever see happening over there? You know, I want to work in partnership and support of my school superintendent. She is phenomenal. I see she is doing everything she can. Uh, I don't think a lawsuit is the solution here in Oakland. I do think some pressure to get the, the unions and the district to a deal. That's what we need right now. That is the only missing ingredient. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, I think, uh, I guess other things is, uh, you know, we just announced that last year we built more affordable housing in Oakland than we had for more than 10 years. And it's the first time that we showed the number of units that were created as part of our impact fee policy. 131 of our more than 600 new affordable units last year came out of those brand new market rate units that everyone can see mostly in our downtown changing our skyline. But just know there are affordable units in those fancy projects and that we are creating affordability in the market rate development and that this policy of impact fees is not only building units, it also generated $20 million to build affordable units in other parts of the city. So I say that's a success. We have to do more. Housing continues to be one of our biggest challenges, but the impact fee in Oakland is working. It's having an impact.